Welcome to Royal Oak History 101. Um, this is class number two, um, sometimes titled Finding Your Royal Oak History. As I said in the first class, um, I approach this by talking about the sources of information on Royal Oak History rather than giving you a lot of facts and details right off uh, kind of in abstraction. So um, we'll, we'll certainly talk about some of the history, but it'll be in the context of where you, you find the information and you can do it on your own. Uh, I'm David G. Penny. Um, if you want to have questions, you can email me at davidpenny at comcast.net. Just be aware of Penny, spelled like J.C. Penny, not like the coin. Um, I have offered a class for the last uh, five or six years through the Royal Oak uh, School District, um, Churchill Community Education Center, uh, on Royal Oak History. Uh, it's usually one night, two and a half hours. I'll probably be continuing that. Um, and uh, you can use this um, uh, Royal Oak History 101 as a kind of a, a foundation or primer uh, for that, that class. It'll be a little more advanced. Um, I would want to mention the books that are available, Royal Oak Twigs and Acorns. Uh, it's a large book. It was uh, published in 2008. Um, it, along with uh, the newest book, uh, My Royal Oak, Images from the 20th Century, it's primarily a, um, a picture book, uh, and uh, two smaller um, booklets, one on the cemeteries, the Royal Oak and St. Mary cemeteries, and one on the Indian Trail. All four of these are for sale, and uh, all proceeds from these books will go to the Royal Oak uh, Historical Society Historical Museum. Uh, which is developing in the number two fire station on West Webster. So here is Royal, My Royal Oak. Uh, it's a, a very nice book um, with a personal touch that I've put into it about my um, memories of Royal Oak plus lots of photos. Um, uh, where are we going in this uh, class? Uh, we're going to talk about the Perkins book, uh, the late Owen uh, A. Perkins book, um, which is really kind of the Bible, in my opinion, um, of Royal Oak history. The Crossman book, Connie Crossman's book uh, from 1973. Um, census records, how you look at census records, how you use them, how valuable they are in doing local history. Uh, newspaper uh, murals, newspapers and murals. Um, the Indian Trail um, booklet, I'll talk about, I've just mentioned that, shown you that, we'll talk a little more detail about that booklet, about the Shrine of the Little Flower uh, church on Woodward at 12 Mile. So let's take a look, first of all, at Owen Perkins' book. Um, some people say there's really two books, but they're, they're really, uh, it, it, because one is uh, kind of green, this looks maybe a little more blue, but it's really quite green. And the other one has a, a, a red cover. Um, and I've just looked through both of them just the other night again, and there's uh, really very little difference. The, the green cover book was uh, published and printed in 1971 um, at the time of the bicentennial. And the red cover book was the second printing that was done in 1974. The only difference between the books is <clears throat> is an errata sheet uh, in the red one. In other words, some of the mistakes in the book have been listed and the correct answers, so to speak, are given there. Uh, and there's a foreword uh, in the Red Book that gives a bit more detail on how the book was prepared and so on. Uh, there's no difference in photographs uh, or text that I'm aware of between the two books. Uh, this is actually the Red Book, uh, Red Covered Book. Um, again, same title, Royal Oak, Michigan, the early years. Um, now, this is the table of contents from uh, the books, the book, since it is the same book. Um, and it, it, it's set up in chapters. Um, uh, establishment of a county. This is truly a royal oak. That's what I said earlier about uh, territorial governor Lewis Cass looking up and saying this huge oak is truly a royal oak. The pioneers in the first decade, pioneers who followed, that would include my great-great-grandfather and grandmother uh, coming here first in 1854. Um, more pioneers, um, and even when all of these people came into the, uh, the township, we're, even, we're still talking about a very small population. As late as the 1890s, the population of the whole t township wasn't over 500 people. 
Um, so the population explosion, so to speak, in Royal Oak Township had not started yet. That occurred much later, uh, beyond 1910, uh, into the 20s and 30s. Uh, about township schools, um, about the various fraternal organizations, um, about the fire department, the police department, and so on. I'm not going to list all of these. Going up to the uh, Golden Jubilee in 1971. Um, this is a note uh, that I received uh, when I received a copy of the book uh, from my dad and mom. It says, Dear David, I hope you're, uh, you, you enjoy reading this book. If you have any questions just um, about anything, just ask me and I will know the answers. Well, it's, that wasn't usually my dad, but he certainly did know a lot. Um, he says, good luck, happy hunting, love mom, pop, 1974. So uh, he gave me a cop they gave me a copy of the book, uh, and he certainly knew a lot about Royal Oak history um, uh, from, from his experience and from talking to his dad and uncles and so on. This is a, a photograph out of the Perkins book. It shows the, um, the bronze historical marker, not a state historical marker, but a bronze a tablet <coughs> that was attached to a glacial boulder that came from Berkeley. Um, and it says, near this spot stood the oak tree named by General Cass, the Royal Oak, uh, from which Royal Oak Township received its name, and of course, from which the city of Royal Oak eventually re received its name. And it was erected by the uh, Royal Oak Woman's Club um, in 1917. So that's rather, and it, it stands uh, right at the entrance to Oakview Cemetery at the Triangle, still there. Um, this is a print uh, that's in the Perkins book of uh, uh, Main Street, um, the east side of Main Street uh, between 3rd and 4th, 4th Streets. In fact, the city or the, uh, the village pump was located along on that side of the street. And you can see where the streetcar uh, or interurban tracks uh, on the left side as, um, kind of go around the corner. They come along 4th Street and then head north, uh, turn and head north on, on Main Street. Um, this is supposed to be in 1908. So this would have been during the village uh, period of the uh, of our town before it became a city. Um, here's some pictures of Orson Starr uh, and Rhoda Gibbs Starr. And he was the, the man who I referred to earlier who produced the animal bell. Some people say cow bells, but it was more than just for cows. It could have been for horses, for sheep and goats and other animals. Be uh, the reason they used bells mm, was because there weren't many fences. And the area was wide open. And if you wanted to find your animal, you'd listen for the bell. Um, um, so that, that, that was uh, why he, he uh, kind of flourished in that industry um, so early um, in the uh, 19th century. Um, the, one of the, the problems with the uh, Perkins book, as wonderful as it is, and this is not to be critical, uh, but it had no, no index. Uh, and a lot of local history books don't have indexes. In other words, on the alphabetical listing of of surnames and, and place names and so on and so forth, depending on how detailed you want it to be. Um, and the Crossman book, which we'll talk about in a moment, that does, didn't have an index either, or doesn't have an index. Well, you can do your own index, of course. I did an index of, to the Perkins book, the Crossman book, and many other books on Royal Oak very early, something like 20 years ago, because I couldn't bear having to go through and try to find things uh, just uh, the hard way by page after page. So I read the whole books and I would index it on my computer. <clears throat> and those indexes are available. And by the way, both the Perkins Index and the Crossman Book Index are available on that same uh, CD that I showed, uh, I think, in the first class that also contains the Fay manuscript uh, in PDF. So uh, when you get the, the disc, you can print out a, a complete index to both books and find things easily. But I think it's a lot of fun to do indexes, and I would recommend it to anyone. I've done indexes on books up in Benzie County that don't have indexes, and on Beaver Island, and so on. Um, and you can help others in the process. You know, you're being helpful uh, for the future. Um, this is the Crossman book. Um, it's called Royal Oak, Our Living Legend, 19, uh, 1787 to 1940. And it was written by Constance King and Crossman. Uh, I did not know um, 
Miss Crossman, uh, in the sense I'd never met her face to face. I did uh, trade some letters with her um, at a distance, um, and I still have those letters. But she died tragically in an um, automobile accident some years ago. Uh, the book again comes from her um, memories of of the past when she was growing up in Royal Oak and from talking to people and so on and so forth. Um, the book was published by the Royal Oak School Board in 1973. Um, it, it does, it, it, um, it, it duplicates very little what's in uh, Owen Perkins' book, uh, Royal Oak, The Early Years. So there's some overlap, certainly, but there's not a lot of duplication in terms of text or in terms of, of, of images pictures or photographs. Um, one of the problems uh, with the book uh, is that the binding is very difficult to use. It was done, I think, kind of inexpensively with, um, with plastic pins through holes in the back of the book and there, there wasn't much space um, from the, the binding, this kind of binding to the text. So when you open the book up, it's, you'd have to really stress it to be able to read right up to the, the edge on the, on the left side. Um, it's a bit of a problem. And my book, I actually, if, if you notice in the picture I just showed you, I, I actually took the binding out and I hold it together with a clamp or with a rubber band. Um, um, the photographs are arranged in a little different way too. They're in the center of the book uh, as a group, some, I don't know, 10 or 12 or 15 pages of photos rather than being placed uh, on the pages with a text, which, of course, is the usual way in which it was done with the, the, the Perkins book. Um, so the photos are kind of disconnected from the text. Um, um, here's a photo of the Mill and Wright Lumber Company as it appeared on the southwest corner of Main and Fifth Streets, uh, approximately 1915. And I, I've labeled the, labeled the page here, page 189.09, uh, because the photographs don't have a page number, so you had to kind of insert a page number in there and, uh, and a designation so they could be, uh, be found. Um, here's a, another page, page 189.15. Um, this is Mrs. Gilbert Elizabeth Hamer, who was, uh, had a house which they purchased uh, uh, on Woodward Avenue and it was moved to a site on Crooks Road, just kind of north, a little bit north and west of the present day uh, Oak Ridge Market. They were some of the first uh, black folks in Royal Oak. Um, this was well before the, the Civil War. Um, and they're buried in Royal Oak Cemetery. Royal Oak Cemetery has been integrated from the very beginning. Um, this is a page that just says, Index to Royal Oak, Our Living Legend by Connie Crossman. Uh, it was one of my early attempts when I was going through the book in 1977 to just um, indicate some pages where, that were significant, particularly significant to me. This page 25 had a reference to William Knowles, my great-great-grandfather, and, and page 195 had a reference to William Anger, who was a, would, would be a great-great-uncle. Um, the census records are very, very useful. Uh, here's one that's been kind of retyped and so on. It's not in the original, um, it's not reproduced from the, directly from the original microfilm <coughs> or um, uh, paper. So it's been cleaned up a bit uh, on a typewriter or computer. Um, and it's for the Knowles family, 1880. So this is the United States Census, 1880. <coughs> and it shows, um, for example, the top left-hand corner, William H. Knowles. Um, his st marital status was married, gender male, race white, age 73, birthplace Ing. I mean, I presume that means England because I know he was, he was born in Tadcaster, Yorkshire, uh, England uh, because I've been there. His occupation was farmer and his father's birthplace was England, his mother's birthplace was England. So it gives you quite a bit of information about him um, you know, complete name and age and where he came from and what he did. And then Amelia S. Um, Ashton was his wife, and I showed you their picture uh, in the last class. Um, female, white, 
53 years of age from New York. Uh, and she actually came from Morristown, New York, on the St. Lawrence River. Um, she was housekeeping. That was her occupation. She was uh, father from England and mother from New York. And then it goes through all the children. Uh, and it gives son or daughter, and it indicates uh, 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 age and so on, and where born. There are really an enormous amount of information in this uh, census record in 1880. Um, now, I've, here are our census records for 1850, 1860, and 1870. Um, and as you go back through census records, and they're every 10 years, of course, um, there's less and less information. Um, in other words, as they went forward with the censuses, they would insert additional categories of information they, they wanted. They're getting nosier and nosier, I suppose you could say, about your personal life. But um, this information, as we know, is very useful to us now in doing family history and local history. Uh, <clears throat> Again, we see uh, William H. Knowles in 1870. It says Royal Oak, Oakland County, uh, Michigan. Um, and it says what page it was on, page 518. So you could go to the original uh, um, handwritten sheet um, in the right place. And it gives his age and uh, sex and, and occupation and so on where he came from. But it's, it's less than it was, it was in 1880. And then I have an entry for uh, some other folks, Thomas Parker, for 1850 and 1860, and I, I won't go through those in detail, but you can see um, there's even less information than before 1870. Newspapers. Uh, of course, newspapers haven't existed forever. Um, they started you know, rel rel relatively recently. Um, most newspapers uh, have been, there's been a, uh, uh, collection of those newspapers maintained over time, but in some cases, you know, there could be holes in the record. We don't have them. Um, where you can get them, they're, they're usually very useful. Um, you can't trust, really trust everything that's written in a newspaper. Um, and here's an example. Um, this is, has to do with my, my dad. Uh, it says, Royal Oaks Captain Penny retires after 30 years as fireman. This was 1972, so relatively recently. Um, first of all, it spells his name wrong, Penny like the coin instead of like J.C. Penny. And then it has his picture, and under the picture it has James D. Penny, P-E-N-N-I-E. -N -N -E. So it's spelled differently again from in the title, and it's also wrong. And he, of course, he wasn't James, uh, he was uh, George. Um, and there are other errors in the text as well. Uh, I'm not trying to uh, belittle the Daily Tribune, which this came from, um, but you have to be careful about your sources, and you check one source against another. Um, this is another article about him uh, from the Daily Tribune. Um, I believe it's, it should be also be 1972, and it says, Retiring chief takes last ride home. Well, he wasn't really a chief. <clears throat> he was in charge of the largest uh, fire station. He was a captain, but he wasn't chief. But that, that's, a, I guess, a nice um, thing for them to do to say chief on his retirement. Um, this is actually quite accurate. Uh, and if you look at the text, which I'm not going to go through here, it's actually very accurate, and the photographs are are well done, <clears throat> and they're labeled correctly uh, with his name and so on. So um, this one's, you know, who knows what happened. And this one was checked over <clears throat> better than the other one. I, I, I don't know the reason. <clears throat> Another newspaper that's um, probably overlooked um, um, in this area is Social Justice. Um, it's a more limited circulation. It was produced by um, Father Coughlin at the Shrine of the Little Flower. Um, but I think it was fairly widely circulated in its time. And there is a collection of uh, the social justice uh, at the, uh, the Royal Oak Historical Museum and also at the Shrine of the Little Flower. If one wanted to study that period or in this area, one would, of course, want to look at social justice and see what was, was said there. Um, 
Now here's a, a newspaper article about, again, about the fire department. Um, um, and as far as I know, it's pretty accurate. It has to do with uh, Chief uh, Charles Henning, uh, <clears throat> who was a, quite a, a much-loved uh, fire chief, and two older firemen, and probably, I think originally they were volunteer firemen, Charles Harris and Fred Gerds, <clears throat> and a nice uh, photograph. Another source of information is murals. Um, and murals, um, for example, the murals that were uh, painted during the uh, Depression um, that are hung uh, in Royal Oak High School, and I'll go through it again, uh, Royal Oak Dundero High School, now Royal Oak Middle School. So if you go up to uh, uh, North Washington to Royal Oak Middle School between uh, Austin and Willis on the west side of Washington, that's the Royal Oak Middle School, and you go into the auditorium there, um, and they've been rehung uh, and cleaned, and a uh, tremendous effort has been um, done to uh, preserve uh, these murals uh, because they were in storage for a period of 25 years or more um, after they'd been taken down from the walls. Uh, but there are three panels to the murals, and I, I'm going to read something from uh, Twigs and Acorns uh, about the murals. Uh, um, it's probably better than I could kind of do uh, ad lib. <clears throat> um, the artist who, there were two artists who um, painted the murals. One artist, uh, Maglia, painted two of the murals, and another artist by the name of Mikelski painted the uh, third one, the one on the, uh, uh, it's the one, uh, actually the one in the center, I believe, in this case. Um, uh, one of the, uh, Maglia's murals depicts how Royal Oak got its name. The painting shows Governor Lewis Cass, uh, territorial governor Lewis Cass, during a 19th century surveying mission, which I've already spoken about, I think twice, standing before a giant oak that had stood at what's now Rochester and Gard Gardenia, actually, maybe a little closer to the triangle. Uh, to the tip of the of St. Mary's Cemetery, but they say Rochester and Gardenia, it's close. Um, and proclaiming uh, this indeed is a royal oak. Um, and you can see uh, Governor Cass standing under uh, the tree and surrounded by um, some lovely ladies uh, and by uh, looks like a French trapper on one side and a Native American on the other. Um, Maglia's second panel includes a lute strumming woman in an ancient Greek uh, costume, um, a Dutch master painter, a Renaissance philosopher, and a partially clad woman holding the traditional masks of comedy and drama. Quite a cultural variety. Mikelski's panel, which is the center one, the tallest one, is more contemporary and local with the facade of the high, of the high school in the background. The picture shows people at work, including an architect, doctor, nurse, judge, newspaper reporter, surveyor, and chemist. So there's quite a variety here uh, uh, in these murals. Um, now that's in the middle school. And if you haven't seen these murals, I encourage you to go there uh, and see them. Ask them to turn the lights on and so on. Uh, here's a detail out of the uh, mural, the one on the left showing Governor Cass surrounded by the two ladies and by the Frenchman and the Native American gentleman. Um, uh, another mural that, uh, there actually are two other murals that we're aware of in Royal Oak. Um, they're actually uh, bas-reliefs uh, rather than paintings um, that no longer exist as far as we know. Um, this one is called um, is called the Pioneer Family, and it it was located along with another one called the First Harvest in the Royal Oak Post Office, the U.S. Post Office, uh, um, located between Center and Washington, just south of Eleven Mile Road. The Post Office building is still there. Um, these were, were uh, produced um, 
1939, and we're at opposite ends of the post office. Now, one was at the east end of the post office, inside in the post office building, and the other was at the west end. Uh, but sometime uh, later, <clears throat> when the post office building was um, renovated, they were either destroyed or removed, and as far as we know, there's no trace of, of these uh, any longer. In fact, what all we have uh, of them are some kind of third-generation photocopies from the newspapers uh, of the uh, of these bas-relief uh, um, pieces of art. Uh, the Indian Trail booklet. Let me speak about that for a moment. Um, I have it uh, here in my hand. Uh, it is a booklet uh, rather than a book. I'm not sure where the cutoff between the two is, uh, but this is uh, was originally. Uh, uh, Printed, uh, I've got the wrong one, don't I? Um, was originally printed um, and by myself in 1996 on the 75th anniversary of the city of Royal Oak, and it was eight pages. Um, in 2008, I expanded it to 12 pages by adding additional material on Native Americans uh, and some of my writing that was um, was appeared in the Mirror newspaper uh, long ago. Um, so it is available for five dollars, um, and all profits again go to the historical museum. Um, well, here's the cover of the, in, uh, the this little booklet. It says it's called "To Walk That Old Indian Trail: A Stroll Through History and Royal Oak." And this is the uh, this is would be, have been the first edition, as you can see. It says on its 75th anniversary as a city. Um, the newer one that's now available is this one. <coughs> um, and again, it has the same uh, Indian on the front and it has an outline of, of Royal Oak uh, City uh, and of um, the trail that passed through Royal Oak coming up from the south along Ridge Road and then passing along through a, along what we now know as uh, Lafayette and then eventually over to Main Street and then at the triangle going out uh, along Crooks Road, uh, roughly along Crooks Road. And part of Crooks Road, the part after the bend um, beyond uh, the Red Run appears, it, we think, is exactly the Indian Trail as it emerges from Crooks Road and goes across the property of the Almond Star House. And we can see the depression there uh, of the actual trail, remnant of the trail. Um, well, here you can see the map that uh, was produced. It's in the booklet. Um, one can walk from what is now six, I-696. It had been 10-mile road at one time, <clears throat> and walk north uh, along the route that I mentioned. And the booklet shows some of the structures that were present along the route, some that are still present, some that are gone. And then out uh, Crooks Road, and again, some of the things that are there. Uh, for example, here in, we see a part of the trail that shows, uh, it talks about Ridge Road or Pinecrest, it talks about Washington Avenue, it talks about the Union School Building, which of course is long gone, was replaced by the Washington School Building, and that was demolished, and now there's a, a parking structure for the community college on the site, um, and so on. And the Indian Trail book booklet talks about the early Indian trails, about the early roads, about, and so on, and a map of, um, a portion of, 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 of a Royal Oak Township and references to Native Americans and Indians in other books that have been written about Royal Oak. So you can go look them up in other places. Um, the Shrine of the Little Flower is, um, as I mentioned, is an important uh, historical site, important, of course, religious site, important uh, art site, and uh, architectural site. And there's a book that was produced by the church um, in 1936. I have a copy of this book. You can see the cover here, Shrine of the Little Flower, Royal Oak, Michigan, with the, the tower with the figure of Christ on the, at the top of the tower. Um, this book uh, has been reprinted uh, some years ago and is available for, I'm not sure, $5 or whatever at the shrine. It's really, really worthwhile because uh, in the book um, there's a presentation of how the shrine was built, 
how the money was raised, about all of the artistic and architectural um, uh, items um, in the in the church. You can see it was prepared by Reverend A. M. Hutting, um, under the I, I suppose in connection with uh, with Reverend Charles Coughlin. Um, well, here's a picture um, of um, Reverend Hutting, uh, Father Hutting, up in the upper upper left hand corner, and Father Coughlin's in the center of this picture. <clears throat> well, this ends uh, class two of uh, Royal Oak History 101. Thank you very much. <laughs>